Today I'd like to do a little bit of color mixing and I want to use three colors permanent rose and this happens to be a Winsor Newton Hansa yellow and then a phthalo blue and in this exercise I've made a circle which I've used my water holder and I've taken it and I've drawn around the outside of it and then I've taken my ruler and I've made 12 triangles. Now the biggest thing is I put a dot in the center where halfway point is but I did not start my line here. You have to make a sort of an X to begin with because you want your yellow, your lightest yellow, right at the top. And then you have three spaces for the secondary and then two tertiary colors and then that's your primary again and another three spaces and another primary and another three spaces. So this is the process that I'm going to take you through and hope that uh, you can follow along. Now one of the reasons to do a color wheel this way is that you have control over your colors. I could use a magenta here, I could use a different type of yellow and I could even use a different type of blue but just using those three colors I could make up my color wheel and I could expand it to 16 colors and and more but I then know exactly how my mixing works for the particular painting I want to do and in this case I'm working with these three colors because they're the closest to what they call um, the printer colors and the printer colors will make all other colors if I was to use a cadmium red because a cadmium red has more orange in it, more yellow in it, if I mix them together I'm not going to get that really nice orange. I might get a little bit more muddy. It might start to look brown. Same with a green. And so we've had to work on that basis rather than have a perfect color wheel that we say, oh this is a cadmium red for my red and this is a, a ultramarine blue for my blue or, or whatever the blue might be, maybe even cerulean or another type of blue that you may actually see when you look at the color wheel that you get from a manufacturer you will find that it's very hard to mix that from all your colors you have to try and figure out well, which color is going to work together with these three primary colors that are printer ink colors um, and that reflect the printer ink colors uh, you will be able to get a full mix and so I'm going to follow you through with you and we're going to create that together now the first thing I'm going to do is take my permanent rose and drop it in my mixing tray because what at the very beginning here I want to go from the center point and try and make it as dark as possible and I don't necessarily use such a big brush like I'm using right now but this point is quite accurate so I quite like this Escoda. But the idea is that when I come out I'm going to add a little more water. Uh, let's get the right water bottle. And I'm hoping to get it to a much lighter color out here. And I could keep pushing it back so that I get a middle value here. And that way I kind of know without having to do a whole selection of testing squares what my values are if I was going to use very light or medium or eventually a really dark and now if I go back into the pigment I can still make this darker okay so that is my first primary my red primary even though it's a permanent rose and it looks a little bit more on the pinkish magenta side okay now having cleaned my brush and making sure I dip it into a clean water and dab it down on my sponge and half sure I've got my towels ready. I am now going to work with my phthalo blue. This is a green shade. If you use a red shade you might find that you're going to get a different set of colors again. And phthalo is a very staining color so be very 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 careful how much you use because it will impact everything including your brush when you go to mix other colors. I had a student this morning say, why is my color turning out brown? Well, it's because they didn't wash out the brush very well and they didn't have that many brushes to use for mixing. 
So be very careful with that. Now I'm going to push that color back down and then try and add a little water. Oh, I've got to be careful. Add clean water to it because if you don't, you're going to get already a mix of colors. What I'm trying to do again is just trying to get a really light value of that at the top of this coloring wheel. And again, pushing it around so that the dark color hopefully goes down. If you tilt it a little bit, that'll help. And that we get a much lighter color up at the top. Now as I've done this, I'm going to take and just use my dish, my towel here I've got on my lap. And I'm going to soak this up because it's there's too much water here and if I don't soak it up I'm gonna have a problem so let's just try and take the tip of a dry brush and just lift it up a bit it's too much water here now I will go back in and just try and darken this with only pigment no actual water easier said than done right Okay, so I've got very dark, lighter, and light. Okay, so now that I've done all that, I've got to clean the brush well, as I mentioned. And I have two dishes of water here, or two pots of water. Could have a third, actually, so that I have a spare, just as my water gets very dirty. Because now I have to go into my yellow. And if you notice, my yellow has already been contaminated here. So I need to, first of all, take some water, hopefully that's not too blue, and clean that. And use my paper that I have, let's find another paper, and just dab that out. Because the more disruption of color I am here, you're not going to get a pure color wheel, right? And I've been playing with it, so it serves me right. already got this green stain in there. Okay, so I'm cleaning my brush again with another water. And here we go. We're going to use the cleaner part of the yellow very carefully. Start at the bottom here. And now really lighten it up by just cleaning my brush, getting the excess water away so that I don't have the same problem I have with the phthalo blue. And now just slowly making that lighter color although this is quite strong I am surprised so I'm gonna lift and try and push it down into the center a bit more okay now having done all that since I have yellow on my brush I am going to now find a clear space on my tray here on the side and what I'm looking to do is make my two color mix for my secondary color. And so by taking some of the yellow that I have and then it is nicely mixed up and taking another brush hopefully so that I'm not mixing everything too much and mixing them together I will get a nice orange. Now at this point on the close to the edge here that is way too ready but that's better. That's not a bad orange. Okay, so I'm going to use that and put that. That's a bit still on the ready side. So let's find another clean brush and add just a bit more yellow to it. Okay. That's quite nice. But you know what I've done? I've gone with the darkest part up at the top. So, okay, I'll push it down here. And I'm going to wash and clean the brush with water. And I'm now going to re wet this area and try and push the color so that it's lighter at the top and darker in the center at the bottom too. Let's see what we can do here. 
Now it's a nice orange, but it's not as nice as orange as I would kind of like, so I'm going to go back into my yellow and just add a little bit more yellow in here. Since I've got quite a bit of water, I can mix it around a bit. Okay. Now I can't really touch any more of that at the moment because if I do, only thing I can really do is sop up some of the water here. Maybe over here a bit because it's so dark here. I'm trying to avoid the color running into any of the other colors of my mix. Now, because this is still wet, I could go in here, but then I can worry that I might contaminate this. So I'm going to leave it a little tilted like this and just let it dry. All right. And I'm going to now try and do the primary, uh, secondary between these two primaries here, which should come out as a nice purple. If it comes out too kind of magenta looking, then it should come into a tertiary color. If it comes out more on the dark purple side, then it should come on this side. But we're going to work only on the first secondary color. And the tertiaries we're going to work later because otherwise, again, it's too wet and it'll be too hard to, they'll all mix together. Now I notice that here it's all kind of crept up and left me with very limited light pink. So I just happened to see if I can just add water and push this down a bit. Make it look a little prettier. Okay, just clean that up a bit. So we have primary yellow, primary red, primary blue. We now have our first secondary of orange. We're now going to make our next secondary, which is the permanent rose with phalo. And I happen to have that just along here on my butcher block. So I'm going to turn it around so you can see. I haven't mixed it yet but I happen to have a whole bunch there. Okay, so I'm going to go in with my phalo, taking a little bit, oh, that's a lovely color, but that's a little bit too, too reddish still, and I'm contaminating my brush again. Well, not so good, but let's go back in here and pick this up. Okay, that's a nice purple. So I'm gonna go in here and Drop this into the center as the darkest part. And now add a little bit of water and try and get it to be a little lighter. Again, the easiest way would be to tilt it a bit. Okay, that's not bad. But because it is wet at the moment, I'm going to turn this around here and tilt it again. You should be able to see that. Perfect. All right, time to clean the brushes thoroughly. One in the dirty water and then back in the clean water. All right, so now I'm going to make my green, which is my secondary color with my blue and my yellow. So having said all that, my blue looks pretty contaminated, so I'm going to go right to the, I don't know if you can see it, right to the top part and hope for the best and put it in an area that doesn't appear to have any contamination. But, but, I need to have a better brush with yellow. And can you see that happening just in the corner over there? Okay, move it back over here a bit. Now that's a nice green but I need a little bit more blue in there and I need to pick up some more yellow. Okay, so that is a little bit too much of a tertiary color. It's a little bit on the greeny blue side. So let's see if I can add just a little bit more yellow. 
No, I'm not happy with that. Let's add a little bit more blue because really that's probably the right greeny blue. So I, you know what? I just happen to have the right color there. I'm just going to go right in here. Because this is dry. So when I can... Add that. So that would make a good evergreen color. Okay, so let's tilt that because my purple is doing okay. I don't think it's going to go anywhere at the moment. Uh, so let's see if we can get a little bit more of that dark green into there. So that hopefully will not... I see something happening here. Let's hope that it doesn't... It's, it's contaminating my blue. I should have left a little space. Okay, so I have to tilt this sideways like this. Let's go back here. So that the, the blue goes back and it stays a little greener. Okay, and I see now that I have this petal of orange. So just be prepared that you could encounter this too. I'm gonna bring it down just a bit. And I can fix this a little bit afterwards, okay? But I can't go near that green right now, and I can't make the perfect green. So what I'm going to do is, you can see it there. That was the green I made. This was the green I was hoping to put in the center. So now I'm going to make even a little bit more yellow, it on the yellow side, by just going back in and picking up some more yellow. We're going to use that as our second tertiary color for the greens very carefully in here. So my true green should eventually go over there. And just cleaning my brush and then just pulling it out to make it lighter. And you can see how towards the yellow it is. And I didn't use too much water there, so hopefully by just leaving it there like that, we're okay. Okay. So now that I've done that, I can go in to make more of a magenta-looking purple. Just because you can see here where I had that purple that I used, and I have them in the permanent rows. And I'm going to go to the warmer red side here. I want to get something that's just a little bit more fuchsia-like. Maybe a little bit more purple. Okay, so we're going to put that in there. Uh-oh. See what just happened? My worst nightmare. Too much moisture. I've got to pick it up before it contaminates it. And I will come back in here and make this purple darker because right now it's looking very much like the other color. But now that I've done that, there's not a lot of moisture there, I can pull this out and lighten it up. Let's add just a wee bit more color in there. Okay, so now that we've done that and it's creeping into my primary color, I gotta switch it over here. I'm going to now try and go for a more of a mix between my purple and my blue. And I'm hiding that color there, so I just need to add a little bit more phthalo into this area to get it a darker violet, like that. That's almost like an ultramarine blue. A little bit more on the purple side. And see, they're creeping in there. 
Okay, so let's try. I happen to have some yellow there, which is not supposed to be there, and it's starting to contaminate it. So I've got to start this process over. Here we go. Just clean that up here. And try a little bit more purple. Sorry. That was the phthalo blue. And now I'm mixing it again with the magenta to try and get that other color that I want. Boy, does that nice violet purple that I wanted in this side mixing up a little bit too much with my other colors. All right, let's try again. So with these three colors, what I'm noticing is that this beautiful color in the center really isn't my violet. This is pretty much more of the violet that I want. So I'm going to come back, I'm going to cover this again. And with this, I'm actually going to add a little bit more phthalo blue. Since I happen to need to fix this phthalo, let's see if I can fix it up here a bit. Oh, you can't see it very well. Okay, so I've added a little bit more phthalo back there, and now I'm going to take that phthalo, and I'm just going to cover it a little bit on here. And hopefully, it's going to turn a little bit more purpley. Not as purpley as I would like, so I'm going to go back to my purple, and I'm going to put it in. Now, what I think I should do, this is quite light. I want to get it back to, not the permanent rose, but I want more of that kind of magenta-y color that I'm missing. There we go. Because I want this a little bit more on the purplish side, but I want a little bit more magenta. So I need to adjust it slightly. Which means I need to make this a little bit more like this and this a little bit more like that. Gonna go back into my permanent rose again. A little bit of water, because I'm gonna waff water. Oh, that's back to more of the magenta. A little bit more of the phthalo. Oh, that's too much. Now we're into the color that I really wanted here. So let's just put that in there. So now, just got to get a little bit more permanent rose back in there. And I think I've got it. There we go. trying to work on this and then hope that by doing this, you know, practicing, you're going to be able to mix the color a little bit better is always the challenge. Because you keep, you know, retouching and, but the more often you do this kind of mixing, the better it will be because you'll really get used to your own set of colors that you want. If you prefer not to have to mix every time. Uh, pardon me, if you, if you don't want to use an actual paint that is just the right color from the tube, but rather just mix when you want to. There we go. Okay, so now, now that I've got all that together, let's, we're going to go back and try and get that green right. Everything else is fairly dry here. Yeah. So let's go in and try and mix that green. We're going to go back to the yellow. 
Can you see that still over there? That was what was too dark. And now let's go back to my phthalo blue. Add a little bit more yellow. And just a hint of phthalo. I think that's a pretty good green there. That's a great green. Pretty close to a sap green, I'd say. And now let's just water it out and just get some lighter tone here. Well, that wasn't as much of a struggle as I thought it was going to be. So now coming back over to my yellows and my reds, we now need to try and get that orange a little bit better. So I have to clean this up a bit. This is my yellow. Okay, it's not too bad, but it's a little bit on the greeny side. So I'm cleaning it out once again. And now I'm going to go to my mixing tray, which I'm going to clean out as well. This is where your spray bottle comes in, but my spray bottle doesn't have enough water in it, so I'm just pouring what I've got out and cleaning the tray a bit. Let's get all this color away. See, so when you do your mixing, try and keep the colors in your other pots and not use your butcher block or your main dish by adding a little color onto it because what ends up happening is eventually you accidentally contaminate it with whatever you've put on here. Okay. Putting that aside, putting that tissue aside. We now have some clean space in here. So I'm going to now take a brush, take some yellow, put it on there. There's the yellow. And that was the yellow right in here. Then we added the permanent rose. Now, to me, this is too more like the secondary color, which is the really dark orange here. That, uh, that's towards the red side. So I'm going to, since I've got it, I'm going to just put it right in here. But in actual fact, it should, that should be closer to this orange, I think. So, I'm just going to... That's, that's the perfect orange. So, now that I've done that, I'm going to go back over here with us. Make this my perfect orange. Leave the lighter parts. And now I'm going to redden this up by adding just a little bit more per permanent rose. There we go. Which this is almost like a cadmium red now, which is really kind of what we want. So that we have what looks like a cooler red and a, and a warmer red. Okay, but now we still need one more color, and that is a mixture of the orange and the yellow. So you wanted an orangey yellow. So what's left here is way too dark because I had it almost to the cadmium side. So I've got to go back into the yellow, and I've got to really lighten it up. And that looks pretty good. There we go. So what ends up happening is now you see what looks like actually a cadmium yellow. Maybe a little bit more. That's too orangey. And um, what now looks like a very much a cool yellow on the other side. I'm just going to clean that out. And drop in some water to get a lighter part of it. And there you have the color wheel. 
using only three colors to make all 12 colors within the color wheel. I'm moving it back to the, you usually start with your lightest color value at the top. So I will mark all these in and then you will be able to see how that works. But what I should show you also is that if you were to take all three colors and mix them together, you're going to get a gray, a neutral. So let's try and do that. I have the mixture here which I put in my yellow and my red. So what do I need to do? I need to add some more phthalo in here. And I just have to work on adding that phthalo in to the point that Right now it's turning green because there's a lot of yellow in there. So in order to change that, I have to go and add a little bit more permanent rose. That's going to brown it up nicely. Now I have to go back and add a little bit more of the phthalo blue. That's going to make it dark again. Another little bit of permanent rose. So now we have almost like a brown, a very nutty brown. I'm going to bring in a bit of yellow again. But I need to bring in a little bit more blue in. We're almost there. Now we're getting to quite a nice dark, dark, dark color. Very muddy. A little bit more permanent rose in there. And we're almost there. Oh, we've just gone over because now we're on a little bit on the movie side. Add a little bit more blue to it. And we've got a pretty nice gray. There's our gray. So that would be considered quite a dark gray. And if you wanted to say you have a navy, Davies gray, which is a, quite on the lighter side, you just add in some more water. Maybe have to add just a little bit more blue in there. Touch of yellow, I think. And there we go. There's our lighter gray. And just by making these colors and those two grays, you would be able to do shadowing and all the different things that you want to with your colors. So thanks for taking this journey with me.